In this video, I'm going to set the needle, thread the needle, and install new bed feet on the bottom. The top will be removed, as will the hand wheel and the upper tension device. The motor is removed also. In the next video, I will start cleaning the motor, hand wheel, and tension device. Please subscribe. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy this video. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to give it a quick thread. Then what I'm going to do as part of the threading process is I'm going to install. I am also going to replace the bed feet on the bottom of the machine. And it will be threaded. It will have a needle and it will have new bed feet. And then I'm going to start checking it out. Here I go starting to thread the 411G and I need to practice. I've got the black thread coming off a uh, thread spool and I loop it into the first guide up there and so there you see we have it through the through the guide and it's just going to be a matter of let the thread drop down. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate your help. Thank you. This is for chain stitching and also this is for chain stitching as well. So here I am and even though I am not going to thread it for chain stitching, this is the way that I believe it should be. So let me do that again. So if I were going to thread it for chain stitching, the first, when I come off the top, I'd come down to here, pull that up in there, and then pull it across and down into there. Whoopsie daisy, I missed. Pull it across and down into there like that, and then down into the tension device. So that's how it would go. And as far as the small pickup lever, I don't know too much about that. So, but this does not apply, but I just wanted to point that out. To the thread guide, there. So it's gone in between the first two set of discs. So we'll take another look at that. We just let the thread go on this thread guide here. The thread guide is right there. And you can see the space. The first space is right there. And that's where the thread is thread guide is going to push the thread to go. So I just tighten the thread with my thumb up there and now I've pulled it through and you can see that it's up against that check on the other side. The thread is taut and I'm pulling it up to get it. Did it go in? Yes. It's seated inside the tension device hook up there. And then what I do from there is I put it behind there like that and then I take it right up to the pickup lever at the top which is up there and I just put the thread through yep I got it through and I'm making sure that it still stays copacetic down here through this whole whole process and then it goes down there you can see how the thread slides in behind there it's in there good and then goes down to there then we get it in there and down to there and there's a little bit of a close-up of the thread doing its thing going through the needle you can see the presser foot is down there but not for not for awful long let me demonstrate that again because we missed I missed a little bit there so it's in there and the way that looks is just like that and then we're going to take the thread down and it's going to go all the way down to right here. And we know from the previous video and experience that if we line it up, we can just pull it down through like that. And then it's going to go right down to here like that. And then there's another one here and then it'll go to the needle. So the next thing is to get a needle on there. We need to set the needle. In order to set the needle, what we do is we take the flat side of the needle and that flat side right there, it goes to the back. So let me make sure I'm telling the truth here. Yeah, it goes to the back and it goes right in, right in there, seated all the way up as high as it'll go 
and then tighten the needle, needle bar, needle clamp. And so now the, the needle is set. While we're here, I would like to let us have another view at how we thread this lower part. And what we see here, gonna have the thread come down and slide that across there, let it get looped in, and then bring it down to this loop here. And then we have our last one before the needle, which is down here, like that. Now we're ready to, to thread the needle. And even though I don't think I'm gonna be very successful threading it, I have it in a good position and I'm gonna try. Here's a better view here. I love it when that happens. And there, that's nicely threaded front to back on the needle. I hope this one came out nice. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate your help. Thank you. What I want to do first is I want to take the top off. So I'll undo this screw here. That was somewhat loosened already, it seems. No snap or anything. This one was a little snugger. Also no snap. And clearly the top is ready to come off. There we have it. I want to put the screws back in so I don't lose them. And those screws are pretty clean. Looking at the threads on them. And looking inside, as we get a little closer, we'll see that it is actually quite tidy in here. There is a little bit of maybe old oil residue. This is clean. That is clean. So far so good here. There may be, there may be something to look at down there. That looked like it was almost like a piece of tissue or something, but it could have been like old grease or there. We can see that it's a little bit mucky in there. Even right along there, there, see it on the, on the grooves there. That doesn't look too bad. And it doesn't look too bad actually inside the cavity there because, you know, oil does spray. And I'm looking at the, that's supposed to be a, oh, it begins with a T, tuck light, something like that. But it looks pretty clean. It's not red or a burnt orange color like the other one was that I was looking at recently, I think in one of the 301s. But anyway, so that's the top. And I'm gonna back up a bit, and I wanna take the bottom off. That's what I wanna do, so we can check out the bottom. And we were in here the other day, chucking something out. And I think we, I think I remarked then, how, how tidy and clean it, it looks. So I'll put that there, but I'm gonna put that right back on there. I want that to stay there. And let's see. So that's pretty clean too. And I'm looking in particular, there's a little bit of varnish there. But you know, in general, it's a really clean machine. Had the pointer in my mouth. Sorry about that, you guys. So yeah, I am really impressed by how clean it is. And um, the motor is a, Usual 400 motor, it is a PA-10-8. And there's a little bit of a close-up of the thread doing its thing, going through the needle. All right, I'm gonna take the top off again. And what I'm doing now is I'm gonna get this top off. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get in there and start getting some oil on some of the varnished parts. But to facilitate that, I want to take the electric motor out first. That one's done and that one's done, is it? Yes, they're coming out. Now I'm going to, I want to get that off. There's a screw right there. And I want to take the motor out so that I can, you know, de-varnish up there. Put a bunch of oil on there. Let it soak in. Look at all the, that's kind of cool, eh? Look at the dust coming, look at the dust in there. I know you can, oh yeah, you can see it. So that's pretty dusty. That's really nice. That's a really nice cord. That's, I think that's an upgrade. The motor's coming out. See, and those, does it say plus minus? I don't think it does, because it doesn't matter. There's no ground, right? So without a ground, 
it's always going to be correct, no matter what. There we go. Yeah, we can see a bit of, bit of grunge up there. And it feels a little bit sticky. And it feels a little bit, I don't know if it's oily or what, but it's a little bit something. But anyway, there is the, the motor. Now, I don't know if you can tell. I think you can. And what I'm looking at is like, just, you know, grunge, a little bit of varnishing, just, you know, dust and old dust varnish, grunge and stains. And that's going to be cleaned out. What I'm going to do is uh, apply some oil to it. And then after the oil loosens up any of the whatever, the, the detritus, I'll get some crud cutter and go in and remove that oil and anything that has become part of the oil while the oil is doing its scrubbing and cleaning. And I will clean that up with the crud cutter and then probably, uh, oh yeah, if it's crud cutter, then it'll be at least a rinse with water or soap and water and then water and then hair dryer. But so that's, you know, crud cutter is what I'm going with because that's what I'm used to. I do have rubbing alcohol, but I'm not gonna use it this time right now. And it's relatively, you know, there's not a lot of varnish or a lot of dead stuff in there. The hand wheel is a little messy. What I actually do want to do next is the upper tension device. Okay, here's our wonderful upper tension device and I'm just going to start taking it apart. There we go. So off comes that. Off comes the lock washer. There's the stud. I didn't take it off the number dial. It's still on there. There's a little screw there. There's the locking washer. That one was, is interesting because it's flat. It doesn't have the curved finger there like some of them do. Here's what's referred to as the beehive spring. And then the plus minus. And this is, this is plastic. Yeah, it's plastic. It's not aluminum or steel or anything like that. But the, the plastic crossbar is still intact because that's what takes the, the end of the pin when the pin comes forward or comes to this direction to push this back anyway. And then here we have the tension assembly. And the tension assembly is the combination of the, the spring, the discs, the, the thread guard. This is the thread guard not the thread guide, that's the thread guard. And then all of that is installed on the tension device stud, and then we have the, the tension device pin. And then this tension device assembly is made up of the, the spring, the guard, and the two discs. So that's our tension stuff, and that's gonna be cleaned. For now, I wanted to take that apart and let you see it before I put it all back together again. <laughs> what I want to do now is remove the hand wheel. Almost looks like there's a crack. I don't know if it's just a, a crack in the enamel or if it goes all the way through. But anyway, there's something there. Anyway, it is. Now that it's undone, I can do what I'm doing. <laughs> That's not all incredibly that dirty. There. Got that off, so there we go. We got the hand wheel off and we'll be able to clean that. And before, you know, I did the other main thing, the main point is I have the motor out, now I have the hand wheel off. I can actually get up there and clean in there and, uh, 
And then down at that end, I still have to deal with uh, the cam stack in the middle of the top of the machine there. But that's nice. I haven't done one of these for a while. It's nice to, to get the hand wheel off and you'll be able to clean the hand wheel and the, the machine. To recap, the machine and needle were threaded. The bed cushions are on. The top, bottom, hand wheel, motor, and tension device are removed for cleaning in the next video. Please subscribe. Thank you.